Hallo Moikies, hallo Katrien, hoe gaan het met jou vandag? Hallo Dominie Tennis, dit gaan glad die goed met my nie. Hoi. Dit gaan so my baie slag. Ach nee Katrien, <laughs> wat is fout? My hoenkie is dood gister Dominie oh. Tennis. Ach nee, dit is baie hard seer. Ai Katrien, wat was jou hoenkie sy naam? Sy naam was Minkie en ek was baie lief hoor. Och, dit is verschrikkelijk hard, seer. Dit is nie lekker wanneer een mens so voel nie. Nee, Maaikie, sit jy ook al so hard, seer, gevoel? Dit is glad nie lekker nie. <laughs> en ek weet, kinders van God moet nie eindelijk hard, seer, wees nie. Hai, Katrien, hoekom sê jy so? Kinders van God, kan ons ook daarom hard, seer, voel? Nee, dit is sonde om so te voel. Nee, Katrien, dit is nie sonde om hard, seer, te voel nie. Ons allemaal, kinders van God, ons allemaal voel betuig daar hartseer, ons voel betuig daar bang, ons voel betuig daar kwaad. En dit is heel te mal recht so, want onthou, ons het gister geleer, dat ons lijf is, is een tempel van die Heilige Geest. So die Heilige Geest woon in ons lijf is, en die Heilige Geest weet van al die gevoelens wat ons voel. Die Heilige Geest weet van er ons hartseer is, wanneer ons bang voel, wanneer ons kwaad voel. Die Heilige Geest ken al ons gevoelens. Nou wat moet ek doen as ek so hartseer voel? Hai Katrien, ek dink as jy so hartseer voel, dan kan jy bid en vir die Heilige Geest vraag om jou te troos en om by jou te wees wanneer jy so hartseer is, wanneer die Heilige Geest verstaan hoe jy voel. Dan gaan ek nou eers een bykie bid. Papa, doe my nie tienis. Dis recht so, Katrien. Ek sal ook vir jou bid, en jou maaikies kan ook vir jou bid, dat as jy hartseer voel, dat die Heilige Geest jou sal troos. En maaikies, as jy ook miskien bykie hartseer, of bang voel, of kwaad voel, jy kan ook bid, en vraag dat die Heilige Geest jou ook sal help, elke dag. Tot ziens, maaikies. Papa, maaikies. Baie welkom weer eens by ons Pinkster reeks, uh, dit is wonderlik om so saam te wees. Gister aand het ons bykie gesels oor die lichaam wat een tempel is van die Heilige Gees. En vanavond gaan ons praat oor hoe die Gees ons bystaan in ons voorstelstrijd. Wanneer het moeilik gaan in moeilike omstandighede, hoe wandel ons in die Gees in al die moeilike situasies in ons levens. Um, maar om ons daarin in te lei, kom ons vraag weer vir Wilhelm om ons te help met die gebed wat ons gister aand ook oor gepraat het, die verwelkomingsgebed, om te sê ook vooral as ons gaan praat oor die moeilike situasies in ons levens, die dinge waar my ons rarig een voorstelstrijd het, kom ons oefen ons asemhaling en ons gebruik die geleentheid om rarig waar die gees in te nooi en ook die situasies in ons leven, die verhoudings wat rarig vir ons moeilik is, kom ons bid saam hierdie gebed. Ja, dankie Tienis. Gister aand het ons gepraat oor hoe ons werk met moeilike emoties. So kom ons vat miskien die gebed so een stapje of twee verder. En ek gaan vraag dat net voor ons begin met die gebed, dat elke van ons miskien dink aan een onlangse sterke emotie, een onlangse moeilike emotie wat ons gehad het. En miskien dink aan waar, waar die emotie gaan sit in jou lijf. In my geval het ek gesê, dit gaan sit hier in my maag. So wat ons gaan doen is, as ek sê, as ons die gebed, die gebed bid van laat, dan beweeg ek as ware in die, die geklemdheid van my maag in. As ek sê los met die uitasemaling, dan laat ek as ware bykie ontspan. En dan die belangrike tweede deel van die gebed is om te sê, ons nooi die gees in, of ons verwelkom die teenwoordigheid van die gees in die beknemdheid in my maag. Met andere woorde, die tweede gedeelte van die gebed is, laat, dan ga op die inasemaling, alles sê ons laat, en op die uitasemaling gees, wat as ware instemming is vir die teenwoordigheid van die geest in die geklemdheid van my maag, om nou maar die voorbeeld te gebruik. So voordat ons begin gebid, bid, kom ons raak net stil vir so, so rukkie, kom in aanraking met de onlangse sterk sensatie wat in jou lichaam sit, en dan gaan ons die gebed gebruik om met die sensatie te werk. So kom ons raak net stil vir so minuut. Diep asem en 
diep asemhaal en in, laat, en ek beweeg in my maag in, uit asem los, in asem laat, gees, laat, los, laat, gees, laat, los, Kom ons sing saam lied 439, O Heilige Gees, O God in ons, ons wil die kracht besing, die kracht van die Gees, wat in ons werk, kom ons nooi die Gees in in ons, met hierdie liedse woorde. Ons lees vanavond uit Romeine 8 vers 12 en 13. Daarom dan, broers, het ons een verplichting, maar nie teen oor ons sondige aard, om daar volgens te leef nie. Want as jylle volgens jylle sondige aard leef, sal jylle sterf. Maar as jylle dier die gees, die praktijke van die lichaam doodmaak, sal jylle leef. So we're reading Romans 8, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Ngoko ke bazalwane singaba netjala kodwa kungekuyo inyama ukuze siphile ngokwenyama kuba xa niphila ngokwenyama niza kufa ke ukuba niyazibulala niyazibulala ngomoya zife inhlondi zomzimba nophila so today I've chosen the text of Romans 8, um, verses 12 to 13. Um, what I particularly like about this text is that I think it can help us to begin to understand how we can, how we can partner with the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to help us be able to overcome the struggles of the flesh. And I think that all of us, as Christian, we can attest to that, that in our faith journey, we are ever confronted with all kinds of different struggles, mm. be it temptations. And when I was thinking about overcoming struggles in our faith journey, and I was drawn to Paul's letter to the Philippians. When he talks to them, he says to them, I am leaving you, but though I am absent with you, 
continue to work out your salvation. So this idea that in our faith journey, we have got to work out our salvation, for me suggests that it implies the fact that it's difficult, that our journey of faith is not easy, that along the way, we are confronted with all different kinds of struggles of the flesh, be it our thought life, be it the sins of the heart, the sins of the body. But there is this continuous struggle between the flesh and the spirit. If you read Romans 8, you know, the verses preceding this one, Paul lays out this tension, this ever-present tension between the flesh and between the spirit and how the flesh acts in opposition to the will of God. Paul says that the mind of the flesh is in opposition to God. It cannot please God. And lays out that for our Christian walk, we are called to live a life by the Spirit. And again, when I think about Paul and how he in his own life embodies this, idea of overcoming the struggles of the flesh. He talks, I think it's in Corinthians. He uses this analogy of a boxer when he talks about, you know, the fact that he's got a practice of self-discipline. He likens the faith journey that we are on to a race. He says that we are on this race. And he says himself on this race, he is like a boxer because he does not want to lose the prize. He wants to be able at the end of, God, of the day when we meet our maker, he wants the crown of glory. And so he says that I beat my body like a boxer and make it a slave. And he's talking there in the context of a practice of self-discipline. We're talking here about overcoming the struggles of the faith. So this idea that Paul himself has a practice that helps him to overcome the struggles of the flesh. And now to go back to this main scripture that we're looking at, Romans, 4, um, Romans 8, 12 to, to 13. I mean, Paul, you know, in Corinthians, when he's talking about you know, beating his body, he doesn't really unpack for us what does that look like in, in practice, right? How, how, do we, how do we practice self-discipline? so that we can live fruitful lives, that we can overcome the forces of evil that wage war against our faith. And what he's doing here for me in Romans 8, he says, but by the Spirit, you can begin to lay down. By the Spirit, you can begin to overcome. He says here, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The idea that it is through the Spirit, that through the Spirit, there is a promise, there is a hope, there is a partnership that we can begin to overcome the many struggles that we are facing. Which takes me back to the book of Ephesians where Paul talks about the armor of God, right? He outlines all the different, you know, the six. But there's one thing he says there. He talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm trying to now make it practical. What does it mean to say, but by the spirit, we can overcome? What does that mean in practice? What does the practice look like? For me, when I look at that Ephesians 6, that we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God has to be animated through our lives, right? That we have got to bring the word of God as the sword that we can use to charge, the sword of the spirit that we are able to use to charge against the forces of the enemy that are waging war against us. So, we are, are empowered by the Spirit. That the Word of God that we are given comes to work together with the Spirit to empower us. What does that look like? 
but I say that we've got, you know, the, the sort of God, the, 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 the sort of the spirit which is the word of God, helping us through our struggles. For me, it is living a life where we are able to meditate the word of God over the situations. As Pentecostal, we talk about declaring the word of God over particular situations. If you look at what happens to Jesus when he's you know, tempted in the wilderness, he invokes the word of God to fight against temptation. So, so for me, we are deeply empowered. We have every resource that we need to be able to overcome all different kinds of struggles. But we have got to fill ourselves up with the word of God. Thank you, Ayanda, for, for the spirit in which you uh, <laughs> were conveying what that text in Romans means to you. Um, and I was, I was moved by, by the way in which, which you made it come alive physically in your body, in your, in your own unique spirit. So thank you for that. I mean, I, I'm very struck by how towards the end you spoke about we almost have to like be animated by the Word of God. And of course, in the Reformed tradition, which I grew up in as well, I mean, we do take the Bible very, very seriously. Um, but somehow in, along my path, sometimes it, it, it lost some of that power. Um, and it almost became a bit more like an intellectual thing. You know, I might read the Bible or I would read a commentary or I would go back to the Greek or the Hebrew or whatever. It, it, in that process, it, it became a bit heady, you know, it's almost like it's, it's mostly in my head that I engage with scripture. And the more I was starting to do the welcoming practice, the more I was discovering some of these other prayer practices which encourages you to almost like sink into the text, literally to memorize parts of scripture so that it becomes part of my, like during the day that it comes back, you know, that during the day when I have a difficulty, or when I feel this, this pressure in my stomach, I can remind myself my body is a temple of the Spirit. Yeah. Let go, let Spirit. Um, so that at these moments during the day, I keep on, you know, almost like these pieces of scripture, and it's like a rich, multi-layered uh, gift that we need to allow to sink into us, into our unconscious even. So that at times when we don't necessarily think about it, it comes back. Mm -hmm. And it's present when we need it. And then the then scripture comes alive. And, and I think that's what it for me it means that the spirit is animating scripture and it's animating it through my life. So in a very practical way for me it has meant uh, literally starting to memorize again some key pieces of scripture so that I have it available whenever I need it. And it's wonderful how then at the most random moments a piece of that that piece of scripture can come back to guide me and be present um, and so in that sense the the bible has also increasingly as i deepened my faith journey my my prayer journey uh, and often a prayer journey that involves not speaking it's a lot of contemplative silent praying but out of that silence and out of that soaking in the presence of the spirit scripture has come alive again and my hunger to go back into scripture and to deepen mm. and to be immersed and soaked in scripture has grown over time. The more I was willing to deepen myself in, in, in more silent prayer. And, and uh, so, so I appreciate what you've what you shared there. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, thank you, Ayanda. I, I, I agree with Valalem. I, um, what I thought of uh, what you helped me is just this idea that walking in the spirit that, that the journey of faith is not supposed to be easy sort of just from the get-go to sort of accept it will be hard it will be a struggle so when i'm struggling with things to not be shocked that this is difficult to know okay it, it will be a struggle and then i thought as you spoke i thought of romans 7 where, where paul says the things I want to do, I do not do. And the things that I do not want to do, I do. And, and also, adding on to what Valalem said, in our tradition, we, we become very um, rational, argumentative. So we try to think ourselves out of the problem. I try to think myself out of the problem. But what I'm finding is, the problem is in my body. In my head, 
to make it practical for me. In my head, I am not, I think, a racist. Because I think all people are created equal in the image of God. But in my body, sometimes a black person would walk past me and my body reacts in a certain way. And I think, well, why? What? Now I'm doing that what I do not want to do. And why don't I do what I do want to do? And that's where you're sort of inviting me to think, but, but you know, ask for the Spirit. This is a struggle that the Spirit must transform my whole way of being in my body. Um, so maybe you can also help me to say, what do you do when you're really in a struggle, in a difficult situation or in a relationship conflict and, and you find you do the things that you do not want to do and you don't do the things that you know you, you should do. How, do. how do you invite the Spirit to, to help you in this struggle? Well, um, I think for me, we have got to accept that the Spirit is given unto us as a counselor, as a teacher. And Jesus says when he gives us the Spirit, that the Spirit will only speak what Jesus, you know, tells it to. So if you, if you think about that, right, so whatever the situation we're dealing with, and we're wanting sort of, you know, the empowerment of the, of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit can only, and I want to connect this to, to what I was saying about, about, you know, animating the Word. If, if we are not engaged, we're not meditating, Venom, as you were saying, in this Word of God, that counsel has to emerge from our awareness of the Word of God, right? We can't sort of be empty vessels. The Spirit, we, we've got to, to be, sort of have a ritual, I would say, of knowing what does this Word say? And then the Spirit is able to animate, right, the Word when I'm dealing with a situation. Because Jesus says that the Spirit is going to remind you of all things. But if I'm not engaged in the Word, in a, dis in a, a discipline of reading the Word, of having a ritual, whether it's in the morning or before I go to sleep, of, of feeling myself, feeling the Spirit with the counsel of this Word of God, what is it that I'm able, what am I drawing from if my world is empty? So, so I, I think of it as, you know, what is required of me? And then the Spirit is able to give counsel because the word already is in me. Mm. The, the spirit teaches, the spirit counsels, the spirit reminds me of what I already know mm. about the word of God. Mm. Um, so I guess what I'm saying, uh, Tynus, is that um, <laughs> we can't sort of be lazy Christians mm. and expect that this power of the spirit it was gonna be working through. No, the spirit taps into what we've filled up because we've got to be feeling feeling otherwise the spirit goes quiet right we quench the spirit we've got to be feeling the well then the spirit is able to sort of nudge us in the right way speak to us counsel us on what we ought to do in those very difficult moments of our faith journey so, as it weer eens baie om oor na te dink en om in te oefen. En miskien kan jy in die paar dae wat kom, een tekstgedeelte kies, miskien uit Romeine 8, een paar verse wat jy kan probeer om het te memoriseer, probeer om het oor en oor te herhaal, dier jou dag, soos wat jy dier jou dag gaan, dat die, dat die woord van God rarig kan insink, en die geest van God so ook in jou leven werkzaam kan wees. Kom ons sluit dan ook naar die oe en ons vraag van Ayanda om voor ons een gebed te doen vir Suid-Afrika. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty Jesus, um, for everything that you have ministered to us today. We thank you for the empowering of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that the Spirit gives us power to be able to overcome the struggles that we face, we now pray, mighty Jesus, for our country, South Africa. Lord, you know every struggle that we are facing as this nation. The challenges, Father God, of poverty in our nation. The struggles, mighty Father God, of divisions in this nation. 
the struggles, Father God, that we are facing around governance in this nation, mighty God. We pray, mighty Father, for a renewal, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, mighty God, that by your spirit, you will intervene, Father God, on behalf of our nation. That, Father God, that we will begin to see a transformation, mighty God, be it, Father God, in our economy, mighty Jesus, where so many people in this country, Father God, go to bed with nothing, where so many people in this country, Father God, are struggling materially, mighty Jesus. Father God, we pray, God, that you begin to move in the hearts of men and women, mighty Jesus, in this nation that those who are able to intervene, mighty Father God, will be able to act, Father God, in ways that bring about justice in this country, in ways, Father God, that bring about peace and harmony, mighty God. In Christ Jesus, we ask of you now. Amen. You can your hand up, Mark, in the Seen of the Year, ontvang. The genade van ons Here Jesus Christus, the liefde van God ons Vader, in die gemeenskap van die Heilige Gees sal by jou wees nou en vir altyd. Amen.